Hi, you're watching India Post Live, India's first web TV news conversation online. I'm Shivraj and today we're discussing whether the BJP has done nothing different from the previous UPA government. You too can join in on the conversation by logging on to indiapostlive.com. Do tweet with us, hashtag India Post Live, or you can use the handle at the rate India Post Live. Right, the, be, before even 100 days of the BJP government, of the Narendra Modi government, there has been criticism that very little has been done to control price rises. In fact, there have been allegations that they have just merely echoed and replicated those schemes that were implemented by the previous government. Let's take a look. Of Modi government's first rail budget duty. came with a lot so of hope. But before it came the rail fare hike of 14% in passenger fares across all classes. NDA deciding to go ahead with the hike suggested by the Rail Tariff Authority, just like the UPA had done. Also came the fuel price hike on 1st July, when NDA decided to hike petrol prices by Rs 1.69 and diesel prices by 50 paise per litre. This after Modi had made rising prices as one of his biggest election issues in the 2014 general election campaign. Now he says, the time is for tough decisions. After criticizing UPA's Aadhaar project, Modi has now asked for a 100 crore enrollment target under the same scheme. The current figure stands at 70 crore with 65 crore Aadhaar cards issued, while FDI and multi-brand retail will not be scrapped. Many may wonder if it's a UPA-3 government, but no, it's a BJP-led government. So can we call it the Bharatiya U-turn party instead? Well, to discuss that story, we have in our studios Ejaz Ami from the BJP and Shehzad Punawala from the Congress. Now, Ejaz, next month's going to be 100 days and al already social media is abuzz with criticism that perhaps more things change, more has remained the same. What do you have to say to that? Well, uh, the, your famous French quotation that you talked about, well, all, I can, I, all I can say is that this program is called, uh, that is BJP becoming a U-turn party? Mm -hmm. I don't know about the turn, but I definitely know the U is very important as far as the BJP is concerned because undoing the kind of damage, the apathy, the lethargy and the policy paralysis inflicted by the UPA on the nation, it's going to take a lot of undoing. Sure, but so the, the, U is, the U is correct. Mm -hmm. And as far as turn is concerned, taking a challenge from a dole-based economy to an outcome-based economy and talking about being pro-business and being pro-poor is definitely something that the UPA didn't do. It was pro-poor Povertarian and pro dole and anti-business. Anti okay. So, so we, we know where the economy is reached and it's going to take a lot of undoing. So the U is very relevant. Okay, we'll come back to that. Yes. But uh, Shazad, you've just heard Aja say that it's about actually undoing a lot of nothing that was done, just promises made by the previous government. What is your reaction to that charge? See, uh, Ijaz is a very respected person, but you know, most BJP spokespersons, they come across to me like those salesmen with, you know, uh, washing powder who come to your house, ring the bell, they say, Ke use karo, sare daag nikal jayenge. and then you try them out and then you find that the washing powder is not very effective. At least they give you a refund. Ijaz doesn't even offer that. So the problem with the BJP is that everything they said, uh, you saw the package that Sanjeev did, whether it was the rail fare hike, Modi tweeted saying that it is the most anti-people measure. What did he do? He raised the fare of railways, including passenger class, by 20%. He said petrol price hike, uh, Smriti Rani used to tweet that this money is going to 10 Janpat. So I wonder if they raise the petrol price is still going to 10 Janpat or it's going to Nagpur. Then after on Pakistan, they said, why are you giving them biryani? Today we find Nawaz Sharif has been given sari, shawl and 20 course meal. So a uh, Chinese. Uh, Mr. Modi goes and meets Chinese people who don't even put Arunachal in our map and uh, they are incursing, uh, they're incur, you know, infiltrating across the line of actual control. They'll blame everything on us. That is just typical of the BJP. But Mr. Modi said, I have a 56 inch chest, zero, in, uh, zero tolerance against women's atrocities. Now, how are we preventing him from acting against Nihal Chan, who has summons issued against him by a court? So there's no answer to that. You see, BJP 
doing u turns is nothing new because on ram mandir they had come they've been committing we'll build ram mandir we'll build ram mandir have they done it till now they said we'll remove the 370 they were in power for eight years six years before this also let us not forget I, and they did u turns then also I, and they're doing u turns today I did to respond to and, and, and just last thing i would like to tell you my brother did a very interesting thing he put a rti asking the pmo that when are these so-called achhe din going to come actually the pmo has actually entertained that rti it's been printed in the story so we all are eagerly awaiting whether the final U-turn like Arvind Kejriwal did in his 49 days, whether the final U-turn will be on this, that Achhe Din Thode Din Baad Aayenge. But to be fair uh, the Prime Minister's office has issued a 17-point agenda to ministries to meet certain targets but having said that, when you track and like Shahzad said, when you track Twitter there were a lot of tweets, especially on FDI in defence. Uh, the BJP stalled that and now they're talking about doing just that. So it's not sitting very well with a lot of people uh, who are there out in the public that, that things that you opposed on principle you're now implementing as well, like Aadhaar as well. You know, there, there were things uh, opposed in principle, but the question was the, the, the entire doubt on the ability of the UPA to actually implement those measures and do it for the public good. There was the entire, that was the issue. Whether this was being done by, by, by a prime minister who was shackled and chained by a, by, by, a, by a high command which concentrated all the power in their own hands, as in the Congress high command, or a, a elected prime minister who's advised and who has the mandate to do these things. So there's a major difference. The, is this the intention behind uh, doing these procedures? It, uh, whatever is done today, is well thought out, sounded, discussed in the party forums with the allies and the, the public has reposed faith in, in, in the ability of the Modi government to deliver on, on various issues that, that there is and various issues that there, are, there, there, there was an entire doubt on the Congress party itself on the inability to deliver. I mean, today it's a very pitiable situation that even in the Lok Sabha, TMC, AIDMK, BJD, that's 80 members of parliament to really twice the number of the Congress, they're not ready to sit with the Congress because they understand that even while they were in government, there was uh, paralysis in the parliament, they also paralyzed. They've been paralyzed by their own colleagues. Okay, so it's, it's we're going to let Shahzad is, uh, is the intention. That, but before it, we do that, this is the intention. What actually, before do that, we just join also in the uh, uh, conversation yes. by the Aam Admi Party, by Shomnath Bharti. Uh, Mr. Bharti, I don't know if you've been listening in on the conversation, but uh, the whole uh, argument is that perhaps this government is merely taking forward policies of previous government, but but we've had uh, Ejas uh, explain that here it's about action, but do you see that action actually playing out? Uh, thank you for inviting me to the show. Uh, I'm sorry for that, I find it late. I, you know, what I, I've not heard uh, all the conversation, but I, what, I can, what I can tell you is that one is out of the other side. Now, as many of them have told us that we will do this good day, on every point, whether it be the point of Pakistan or China or criminals in politics or criminals in department or it be education or it be culture, anything you see or Mahangai, nothing or corruption, on every point the government has made a U-turn. And why? There is a reason behind it. Behind it. The problem is that the, if you really, really want to know that for whom this party or this person contesting election will work for. That will be decided by the fact that from where are they getting the money to fight election. And this is true for both the parties, whether Congress or BJP. Both the parties get a lot of money, thousands of crores to fight election from crony capitalists, from capitalists who basically in turn run the government. So after getting into the government, what will they do? Whose interest they will cater for? They will surely be bound to cater the interest of those capitalists, of those crony capitalists whose money they have used to buy collection. Okay, and so, yes. so we're gonna we're gonna get let our guests also respond to that, Mr. Bhati. We'll also come back to you. But crony capitalism, this is a charge that a lot of people have made of, of, of even... It's the a speciality of the Ahmadi party, yes. No, but even the BJP, the fact that a lot of business houses have thrown their weight behind and, 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 and are hoping that pro-business policies will be implemented and therefore they're caught in a bind between what they made promises, what Narendra Modi said during the election, what they're delivering now. Well, the, it's very, very clear. What has the finance minister said? He said, we will be pro-business, which is therefore the way to being pro-poor because if you... Uh, by being pro-business, by getting an enabling mechanism, by creating a right environment for investment, for reigniting the economy, for manufacturing, increasing the manufacturing base, thereby creating employment, you benefit the pro-poor sections. 
it's what uh, the, I, I'm coming back to the same thing from a dole based promise based economy to an outcome based economy that is the intent and that is the content of the finance minister's budget speech and, th and that's exactly what he's down to do now my friend Mr. Somnath Bharti is talking about crony capitalism I agree there is crony capitalism in, in, in this country definitely but the same charge is totally negated when the same government that you accuse of I mean, Mr. Uh, Somnath Bharti keeps on talking about reliance, but the reliance industries has been levied a penalty of 580 crores by the same government, which they said is, is, is in bed with, with, with the Modi government. So there is a dichotomy, there is there's something which is totally op uh, opposite to the charges that are made. What happens on the ground is totally different, I and mean, you can make these allegations, but these allegations have been negated and, and, and been rejected by the polity at large. I mean, you have to come up with new ideas and new allegations. Attack the government where it's not doing a job, but do it in the right manner. But just don't. The same record can't be played again and again because the needles have have have, have worn out. But we haven't seen any new ideas. It's almost Can like I, repackaging of the old ideas yeah. that 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 were brought no, no, to the fore. No, one second. Yes. First of all, let me tell you that they are a cheap knockoff. They are not an imitation at all. They are a really cheap knockoff. Secondly, let me now counter all the points Hijaz made and Somnath made. Somnath Bharti, uh, first of all, uh, he's right. Ek khadde se nikle, dusre khadde mein gire. I think he's saying that in terms of Delhi, because aap se nikle aur BJP mein atke. We are seeing the power crisis. So anyways, the central government does most of the things in Delhi. I'm you. sure you know about the system. Yes. Anyways, the thing is that Somnath himself is a quite a U-turn master. He's challenged me on numerous occasions to come to Khedki Extension to debate with him. Never once lived up to his promise. Never once lived up to his promise to sue me. So he's quite a U-turn master himself. Anyways, I don't want to make Somnath the issue. Now, uh, Ijaz is saying something very interesting. He kept referring to the word doles. I think he should know that in this budget, the amount of subsidies that the government of India has given has actually increased. He's given the same allocations for Manrega. He's given the same allocations. Subsidies are not one doles. Second, one, second, one second, Ijaz. Yes, yes, yes. Then what are you calling doles? So, except now you're saying you're pro business. Let me tell you that yes. you, you and the BJP spokespersons went around town saying retrospective taxation, tax terrorism. Your finance minister hasn't uh, removed retrospective taxation clause. You do know that in the Vodafone case, okay. he's not done that. Let, let me complete. That matters all in the court. Complete. He said there will let be no me, new no, retrospective no, 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 measures. No, no, no. no, one second. So it yes. was in court when you were arguing. Uh, I read the finance minister's speech also. Uh, Ijaz, I yes. didn't interrupt you. Yes, yes. You were also knowing that this matter was in court when you were making your election rhetoric. Yes. You also made the election rhetoric that Pakistan se hum dastir laenge. To yesterday, a Jawan has been killed at the line of control. See, there is a lot of difference between... And you're saying you, you gave $500 million penalty to Reliance. Yeah. Do you know in your same budget, you have reduced the cost of branded petrol of petrol from Reliance, which is a clear-cut benefit to them? So please, you, perhaps your knowledge is half-baked, but you have done a lot of U-turns and the only people you've pipped and actually imitated is the Aam Aadmi Party at doing U-turns. You tried to copy most of our budget, but you're such a cheap knockoff that I, I would be ashamed to say that you couldn't uh, even I, copy our we, budget. We have copy. no intention of copying your, your budget. Well, you should your look budget at led then. to a policy paralysis. Yes, we have inherited 10 years of, uh, of uh, policy paralysis and misrule. And we you know, inherited well, well, six years of misrule from you then? Absolutely. So, okay, I think Somnath we is going to do six years okay, of so misrule. Let, let, let Somnath Bharti intervene. Uh, you have your hand up, but, but uh, you heard Shahzad there. He's saying that uh, it, it be, it's become almost par for the course that everyone seems to be doing a U turn. It's just about repackaging and reinventing. You know what? Uh, in fact, the gentleman from BJP, I, I don't know his name. Uh, Shahzad, me. Yes. But then, I just said chronic capitalist, and he took the name of Reliance. Exactly. Why did he think that chronic capitalist was Reliance? Because that's First. part of your main agenda in every speech you no, take I, the I name of certain companies. So I'm just bringing the fact to your notice. One second, hold on, you have, you have had your chance. Second, between BJP and Congress, there is not even an iota of difference. You look at the, the most sacrosanct uh, uh, wing of ours for judiciary. Now it is proven because of the statement of Justice Kadju that in judiciary there was a lot of interference by the Congress government. What did he do? They tried to influence judiciary also. And recently by this uh, uh, incident of Gopal Ramanyam, Modi government fully responsible for of, of interfering in the judiciary in the appointment of judges. Both these parties are so much alike that nobody can see a difference. And this Delhi incident this post 16th May of 2014 incident has clearly proved to the entire nation that these two parties are so lustful for power, they can go to any extent to grab power.
and that's what they're doing. Okay, so we're going to get a reaction to what you've just said. Let me, let me complete it, yeah. sir, one second. Unfortunately, Honorable LG, when, when we had approached uh, yeah, uh, Devapur yesterday, uh, Dr. Harshwardhan uh, two times promises to LG that they don't have the numbers. In December 2013, Dr. Harshwardhan had betrayed him and said that we don't have the numbers, we don't, we don't want to form the government. Uh, in February 2014, again, Dr. Hashwadhar had visited the, the Lieutenant Governor and said that we don't have the numbers to form the government. Now they're reduced from 32 to 29, and today they're not agreeing to have the election in Delhi. If at all they think they're, if they're, if they're not a U-turn party, and if the Congress party at all has that sort of to, to test. Okay, we seem to. Then go, why are they not at all asking? Uh, <laughs> okay, so we, we will come back to that, but uh, I think you you made multiple points, Shomnath. Sure, 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 sure. So we, we've got someone else also joining in on the conversation, so we'll come back to you. What I'm saying, one second, one second. What I'm saying that the BJP government tried their best earlier not to allow this election to happen. Now they want to form a government. This is absolute but that's an entirely separate uh, discussion we can have. But we're talking currently about the policies at, at the national level. Sure, sure. If at all policies are pro poor or pro people or pro aam they should go for election. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So we've also got Paritosh Vyas joining us from Ahmedabad. Paritosh, if you've been listening in on the conversation, uh, uh, you know the, there've been charges traded back and forth that very little has really changed. It's just about uh, the packaging that's <coughs> different. Uh, also, you had Shomnat Bharti there making the allegation of crony capitalism really driving the political agenda. What is your reaction? It's been about two months almost uh, since our party has come to power. And yes, there have been a few instances, specifically in budget, where it has been said that uh, most of the uh, old uh, policies of the erstwhile UPA government have been followed or repackaged by the present NDA and BJP government. To an extent, I would agree to that. Uh, what happens is that on major issues, uh, policies don't change suddenly. For example, in FDI case, uh, yes, BJP has been very vocal about opposing uh, FDI in retail specifically. But considering the uh, empty coffers which the UP has left us and the country, then Mr. Narendra Modi would really not have much of a choice rather than continuing with the policies and trying to implement them in a better way. That is one part. Second part is uh, the in which uh, the policy was being uh, affected by the erstwhile government. This government has already started showing that in two months time, it has taken a lot of steps which the uh, erstwhile government could not take even in the 10 years of their tenure. So the uh, well begun ha is half done that uh, uh, syntax uh, will be held good here and I'm sure that with just two months in the government this government is already proving to be a good uh, bet on giving good governance to the country. Shaza to, to react to that because the, the allegation that, that Paritosh Vyas is making is mm -hmm. that they, that, that the current government inherited a lot of problems rather than 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 uh, easy solutions. And so, therefore, the first few months is really being spent on trying to correct the wrongs before they move on to any new ideas. What's your, your reaction before to I that? Before I answer that allegation, which is purely rhetorical, let me say that Aam Admi Party, its entire culmination was on, based on a U-turn because they had said they would never form a political party. They U-turned and they formed. So their existence begins from a U-turn. So you know why they do so many U-turns in their 49-day government. On the other hand, you have a situation where today we're discussing BJP's U-turn and you feel right that there should be at least two representatives to take on one of us because the issue is so tricky for them. That is a telling statement also. Now, as far as Paritosh's statement is concerned, these statements should be founded in fact, not in fiction. We can also go back and say when six years they ruled as NDA, we were, uh, they had empty coffers. Today when we left the economy, no, one second. One, so I'll, now I'll tell you why you can't say that. You can't say that because when you left the economy, it was not one trillion dollars. We tripled the G GDP. We tripled per capita income. We tripled uh, your foreign exchange reserves. We tripled uh, household incomes. We tripled everything and gave you a full leaf uh, finance treasury. And yes, it, there were issues. You gave us a deferred payment. 
payment in India dairy one budget of one lakh crores, which you could not service. And the, this government has this to service. Not, this is not. Fact. This is not true at all. This is not true at all. These are generally. In the interim budget of Mr. Chidambaram, it was very clear. First that of one, all, one lakh crores will have to be decided when the new government. Okay, so, are you, so let's get back to your, your brass tax. Let's get back to brass tax. I think what's pinching everyone is the price rise, the inability of the I agree, government. I agree. Can I can I put I just three posers? Just yeah. three posers. I don't want to fight on the political issues. I will not call your U-turn party if you can tell me. Specifically, when are you going to withdraw the so-called tax terrorism retrospective tax provision? When are you going to make sure that petrol and diesel prices will not increase no matter what? Because you expected that from us. And please give us a written commitment that you will not talk to Pakistan, not exchange salt, sardis, biryani, masala dosa, anything with them if the killings continue. Why can't you give this to me in writing? Because this is what you committed in your election man campaign and manifesto. Okay. On, your, on your first aspect, you spoke about tax terrorism. The finance minister is very, very, very clear that what is already in the court will have to be decided. But in future, the, the You're government. You're telling me legislation the, can't overrule what is in court. No, it's it's already there. When a claim has been made, when, when there's a government of India department fighting for 20,000 crores tax, let the High Court take a view on it. The, the, the money's not going anywhere, the High Court's not going anywhere, the Vodafone's not but going anywhere. You said this entire but, thing was but, causing a problem but, in uh, but, investment. But simplifying various procedures. So what was wrong when it was in court before your government came? Why did you blame us for tax terrorism because when it was the, in court? The fact that your government uh, took such a step and created an environment which but stole... But the parliament stole, passed it. Even you passed it. Even I, you supported us see, in passing that provision. You asked me not you, to serve you, you when not. I am speaking. You want to, but you're, you're, you're lying you want to, to pose a question to me and then you don't want me to answer. Because your your so U-turn and your okay, hypocrisy so is being You are the paragon of virtue. Yeah, and no, you are the paragon of virtue who has been unveiled by the polity to, to, to your situation. Then don't blame me for this. Okay. My, my, I'm coming back to what your, your questions were. It is very clear there is an endeavor to reduce tax terrorism which is very evident from what the finance minister said. Secondly, you spoke about price rises. There's a price stabilization fund that is coming to place. Petrol there, price. There are changes in, in mechanism. Petrol, you want to increase petrol and diesel prices. We, yeah, the intention is to reduce petrol prices as and when we can. You but will not increase it anymore. There is no, you there, will not increase it there anymore. There is no leverage left in the economy anymore. right now to address certain issues like... Uh, you deregulated petrol prices in the last NDA government. Why do you keep forgetting the, these things? No, I'm we saying, continued your policy, the, you blamed us. The government is work in progress. Policies are policies. So you will increase petrol policies, prices. The petrol prices are linked to global prices. So why do you criticize us? us? Why did you criticize we us? We criticize you because the way you were doing it was riding roughshod over people's aspirations. Basically, you just didn't okay. like the way we did. Okay, go. fine. So no, we've got Shomnath Bharti. Right. You guys look great. You guys look great. Okay, so let's have Shomnath uh, also intervene. Shomnath, you've been hearing the very heated discussion. What is your? What do you want to say? I see that uh, the Aam Aadmi Party, in fact, Sanaj Shajat Punawala was saying that they, they, they say that they will not join politics. They are the ones. BJP and the Congress both are the ones who said that in case you want to frame the legislation called Lokpal, fight election, come to the parliament, and then on your own you have to frame this legislation. Be understood. Because these corrupt people, they can never ever draft a legislation which will uh, trouble them only. That's the whole problem. Nobody is going to sign the death warrant. And that's why we formed the party, we fought election, we went to the assembly and we tried to legislate the, uh, legislate the law which we had promised. These two parties, scared of consequences, they did everything within their, within their reach to, you know, make us go. That's, that's the problem. Uh, try to understand one thing. The parties like Congress and BJP, both are funded and run by the capitalists and crony capitalists in particularly. Ours is the only party which was basically and fundamentally did a paradigm shift. And the paradigm shift was that actually, literally, the power went into the hands of normal people, Aam Admi, for the first time in the history of uh, politics. An Aam Admi, normal people, ordinary persons, they got hold of the power. And this they could not digest. Because 2% of the population is controlling over 98% of the population. And this was an opportunity when it, 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 it got reversed. And okay. that is what... Okay, you made a point there. What, what, okay. The, sure, sure, you made a point. So can we just have everyone on, respond to that? But I'm just going to... Hellbent on destabilizing our party because they understand that this, this miracle which took place for the first time, ordinary people got into the seat of power. They cannot digest their and all these sure. powers. Okay. Are okay. You made you made a point that Shomnath. 
or these political parties, all of them want, all of them want to destabilize a party which is truly of Ahmadi, and they are literally they don't have a way out. They don't see a way out. The only way out they see, they would be doing everything and anything, whatever they can. They want to use the police. They want to lodge false cases. They'll be using commissions. They'll be using whatever possible to 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 okay. make users. Right. To okay. Let, let, let me just and take on. Let me just take on the opportunity to let our guests in studio to respond. Sonar, but let me just reframe Sonar this. Sonar uh, is advocating Modi's bullet train. He starts. He doesn't stop. So okay. the thing is that here is the thing. Both BJP and Aam Aadmi Party sound like each other. They make rhetorical allegations, and not one of them has quoted facts. I asked three questions of uh, 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 Ilmi; he has not answered them. Somnath is, is talking uh, from, from a very high moral ground. He must remember that his is the party which committed that they would take action on women's issues. They threw out a Madhu Bhaduri, who is a stalwart in women's issues, and they have retained a man like him who went around uh, carrying out those raids and doing all sorts okay, of so things. Okay, so let's let's go down that. So road. let's let's no, no, understand no, no. So where let me, these let me people come from. We are digressing okay. from the okay. point we're that we come from. Okay, we're digressing from the point of the discussion. Okay, one second, one second, one second. You pose questions. Okay, Pakistan. I think the big question that everyone has is that your entire platform on FTI was based on a Swarajya view of economics, right? Uh, the fact that's is your that, perception. No, but but uh, that's your the perception. Election, no, yes. but the, throughout the election, the BJP was very clear that they were against FTI. In, Narendra Modi, in, 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 in however, in retail. Changed, in retail. Yes. Right. But Narendra Modi then spoke to small-time traders and did say very clearly that we, that you have to be prepared for the big retailers to come to India. He said traders that's take what, more risk than soldiers. Which is what everyone's saying now. F from a position there, you now turned around and said that FTI is going to take place. Absolutely yes. What I'm trying to say is when you talk to the stakeholders and you come to consensus within and you, I mean, politics is not about taking dogmatic views. It is, it is the continuity and uh, being in, in, in talks with the stakeholders within the confines of the constitution. You have to go ahead and you can't be seen that I'm not going to touch this. I'm not interested. I'm paralyzed. You have to be proactive. You have to interact with the stakeholders. And as and when the stakeholders are also ready and in, in the best interest of the country, if decisions have to be made, they have to be made. Okay. We will let you close, but no, no, I want to frame a question. Yes. Uh, I'd like you to sort of respond, A, to, mm. to what Eja said, because the big argument is that 90 days is not enough to assess a government. There were a lot of legacy issues mm. that the BJP and the NDA have, have have to tackle. So price rise, for instance, bringing Essential Commodities Act in when it comes to potatoes and onions. These are very hard decisions and Narendra Modi did set the stage for that when he went on INS Vikrant and made those um, statements there. What is the Congress's view? Uh, are you going to hold uh, hold the BJP accountable on all the things that you, that you posed as questions? First of all, you're right. 90 days is too short a time to judge their performance as a whole. But it is too small a time to not judge where their priorities lie. Okay. Secondly, there is no doubt that they are going to keep blaming everything on the last 10 years. But the joke will be on them if they keep giving this idea that the last 10 years are the reason why we can't perform for the next 10 years. Because everybody makes these rhetorical claims about bad legacy, etc. Let me give you one final example. GST, which could have added 2 to 3 percent to our uh, GDP growth. They promised it in their manifesto. We came to power. We tried. We made their chief deputy chief minister the head of the committee of the chief ministers. Sure. They never cooperated. Gujarat was the biggest uh, blocker of this entire thing. Today they are saying we will now try to bring GST again. I can understand all of the other issues. Why wasn't something that was so much in national interest? They said FDI and retail is a threat to national interest. FDI and defense 100% is no threat to national interest. So you see the difference between what they say and what they do. When they are in the treasury benches, it's something else. When they are in the opposition benches, it's something else. This is not the hallmark of being a statesman. Okay, so no, I'm no, going to let I, Ajaz have the last I'm word. Just, no, I'm completely out of no, time. No, I'm not having Go the ahead. last word. I'm just trying to say one thing. Is that the intention is to deliver because if you don't deliver, we'll be decimated like the, like the Congress. And we have no intention of being decimated. We intend to deliver what we intend to do. Okay, but you're only so giving we're, us okay, intentions, okay. We're not totally actions. out of time. So we will be watching very closely. I think next month when, sure. when the government presents its 100-day record and the next steps in the strategy, we sure. will know what, what the thinking is, if there are any new ideas or not. Thank That's you very much for joining, for joining in on the conversation. You too can continue the conversation by logging on to our website, indiapostlive.com. You can also tweet with us. Keep those tweets coming in. <coughs> we will, of course, keep playing them out during our shows at the rate India Post Live. Thank you for watching. Thank you.